white people and stuff like that. I have a $5,000 uh, request on the lab, a donation thing. Right? The reason why that's up there is basically for everybody in the world because there's no way that, oh, the curiosity, tired seeking things. So if you actually want to come and see the lab and see the stuff in there and everything like that, we have to make a financial agreement and I have to, I only want serious people that are interested in doing it. So from this, let's uh, take, you know, a minute for, I don't need a minute break, we can just turn the thing on and I'll explain this and run it. What this motor is, well, let's get going on with this thing. So I'll just need lights over here. Lights. So. Oh, yes, yeah. Okay. Okay. So the way you get okay, let me start this way. I'll tell I'll talk about the motor and then shoot I'll point here and point there. Okay. Remember the cheese sandwich, ham and cheese. The ham is your uh, north, uh, cheese is your south, magna. Your bread is your top coil. Your bread is your bottom coil. You know, you gotta buy bimbo bread. It actually is a company. Um, so then what you have is, you can put a flywheel, you can put all ancillary. Now let me answer something. I meant to do this very early on. How many people in the audience uh, has, have actually made a DC motor? Now how many in the audience from scratch have made an AC motor? Now, how many have made a three-phase motor? Now, how many have made, after they made their motor, they actually did something with it? Now, you got to realize that a motor is to do something. So what you want to do is you got to look at the need, and that's the way I look at things. And so the need for me is I used to build race cars and everything like that. So what I wanted to do is I want electric, and I want electric without batteries. That's the ultimate goal, yeah. Yeah. and I'm going to have it. You know, so when I set a goal for myself, I meet it. So at the end of the day, one of the things uh, with this is this is here to sit here and show you how the whole thing works. And remember what I said, and I'm giving you this clue so that you can actually get it to go. <coughs> Two hundred pounds. In this one, do you see 200 pounds? No. no. Okay, so everybody in the whole world that's made a Newman motor has not made it correctly. You have to have a certain amount of wire on here to create the Newman effect. If you don't have that wire on there, you will not get the Newman effect. You will get close to it depending on how much wire you put on. The more wire you put on, the more effect you get. Simple as that. Don't get any simple. Does the size of the wire matter? Doesn't really matter. Well, it depends on. Now what you have to ask yourself is how do you take it from a big standing thing and then put it down into a smaller thing. So I will show a picture of that and that was, that'll be the final thing after I do the demo and everything like that. So then this is to show you all the parts. The original uh, commutator right here is what actually goes on here. So about a week before I came out here, I popped this, I made this out of scratch and put that thing on there. So that's actually the original one on there. And like I say, when I make, mot when I make motors or anything like that, I make them do a lot of other things. Because I'm always thinking ahead. Remember, as John Bradini used to say, it's, the, the motor's teaching you stuff. Peter Lindemann said the same thing. And if you're dumb, you don't learn from it. And remember one thing. The motor is presenting you information. You, as a human being, decide whether or not you want to learn. That motor is not going to hit you in the head and bang you in the head and say, yo, wake up, uh, you know, you, you're going to learn, I'm a teacher. No, you're going to accept and decide whether or not you're going to learn. So when John or anybody else teaches you something, then you go ahead, they're presenting you information. And so once you get that, so you have people who have presented information and your need, we get back to the need. You say, well, what do I need? Well, I can tell you, if the lights go out in your, your apartment and everything, well, if you have something that can, you know, put the lights back on, that's a pretty good need. So this was the original one. This was the original thing on there before I took it off. And now it's easier and it's like this. 
So then I didn't feel like really putting these things in the right way. So I go, you know what? Rubber bands will work. <laughs> so I put the rubber bands. So what you're looking at here is on the front, if um, the commutator will be like right here. This is the one side. So right up here will be like one. This is a two one. I'm not even using this. The reason why I made this is so that I can actually show it to you because you can't see it behind the thing. So this one right here goes to the negative or positive, I think. Yeah, positive. Then you rotate it on the other side and that goes to the negative. Now, when you make these commentaries, you gotta understand that you gotta have some, some level of building skill because what you have to do with the commutator itself is that you start out with a piece of uh, metal and everything. I mean, a piece of, uh, of uh, Delran or whatever this yeah. plastic is. Drill a hole through here, and then what you can do is you can make a slit on one side, you make a slit on the other, and then you gotta bend it in and you lock that piece in there, and then you turn around and you lock the piece in there again. In this state, I just drilled through school, drilled a hole through the top piece, hole through this top piece, ran the wire through from this piece to here, and then that piece to there, and then that's it. And make sure everything like is somewhat tight, you know. And then that's pretty much the uh, commutator. And then what the next thing is, is you just wrap the wires here, you wrap the other wires here, and then you connect them exactly the same way that he has them connected here so that you take a uh, coil, the end of here, and the here, and the here, and the here. So then that's it for there. So then your output, your negative goes to here, your positive goes to here. And so then you run that there. So the, when, co the coils are in series then? E e yeah, I think so. <laughs> series parallel. Mm -hmm. It's too early in the morning to look at that one. <laughs> um, so then, then what you do is put a, cro a capacitor across there and everything. Now, the whole thing about tuning also, about the whole um, capacitance to the inductance effect on here is that you, you just play with this. And the way you're gonna find that out and how you play with it is that you will play with it by the spark. You will see the type of spark that's going on there. And you'll see different the colors and everything. So when I was doing my Tesla coils and the big ones and everything like that, when you see those bluish sparks and everything like that, you know, that's all like voltage, you know. I was running two or three million volts into that, those big coils and stuff. And when that was going on there, I, had, I could put streamers, I had two metal plates in there. They're hanging two and a half feet apart and everything. I had streamers that, of, of the streamers going through there, absolutely pure white. Because all Tesla was doing, it was an ether Radiant. pump. Okay. So when you see the different colors in here, and what happens is, you don't want white, you don't want any of that. What you want is absolutely no spark whatsoever. And so that's the ability with this. You want to be able to tune this. And once you start seeing no spark, because you run it with it and you start seeing the spark and everything, you're going to put pits all over your commutator, metal, everything like that. And you really don't want to do that. So that's your uh, capacitor here, your coil here, coil here, and your magnets. And I just put two neodymium magnets on the end, the ones that have the screw, it's a square and everything like that, and jam the shaft right on through, well, half through, because when I changed it, I had to put a shaft here, and it's like half welded. But um, my whole life, I've always built stuff. If it can be built out of junk, and it works, the principle works. I've seen builds that look like works of art and should be like some art museum. And you walk in and the person says, look at this, and investors get excited, and the investors are so excited because the, he doesn't know an engineer, but he finds a friend as an engineer. The engineer just wants to get a finance fee, whatever. And he says, oh yeah, yeah, that works. And the investor puts his money in, and he gets burned. But if you show an investor something like this, and it actually does work and everything, the guy's just gonna look at it, well, that's a pile of junk, and you know, I'm not putting money into that. <laughs> so at the end of the day, that's why the key is to go ahead, and when I work like this, that shows the principle. But when I work to get to the point of doing product and everything, then what it is, I'm not an engineer. I'm never claimed to be an engineer, anything like that. But I know how to design boards and stuff like that. Now, I could do that, but 
why do that when I have uh, somebody that can absolutely do it 10 times better and has experience, he's a registered engineer, and at the same time, once all this is done, he will sign off officially on the free energy type of devices that I have. And then once you have that, then you can take that. We're gonna have data sheets, and then that's where the investment comes in. You show the data sheet to an investor, you bring in other trained electrical engineers to test the actual unit, and once they test it, and there's no, and the other thing that has to be done, and I'm publicly saying it, make sure that everybody gets this. All this like negative energy and, and cold energy and all this, what has to be is there's gotta be a split line on a piece of paper. Put all the names that everybody's familiar with. Then what you have to do is you've got to take engineering terms. You've got to connect the engineering proper terms up to the names like negative energy, cold energy, whatever word is over here. Once you do that, then the engineers will be able to do it. And the reason why the engineers need to do that is the fact that they need to sit there. You don't want a, a bridge, an engineer guy sitting there all liquored up, and the next morning goes, in, well, maybe 13 rivets should go on that bridge. It's good. That'd be good. No, that's why they're so immobile. The society's built with engineers because when they get it, but they're not really inventors. You know, inventors just sit there like, you know, I'm not sure what they do. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, what, they, what it really ends up being is you put it together and then you take it, so then you give it to the end user engineer people, so you put it a product, then it's a plug and play product for the person. You know, I like plug and play, I love technology. So on that point, what I'll do is I'll run. I will first run the unit with uh, a DC, um, uh, from AC to DC in here and then it'll go in here and I'll show you the run and everything like that. And then what I'll do is we can put the batteries on it and everything. So I'll run it with the cap and then I'll run it without the cap. And then, oh, this other thing. One of the things Newman didn't even do and everything like this is it, you want to get more torque out of it and everything, you put these two things on the outside. Uh, now when you run the, these two things on the outside, you'll have a higher, you have a yeah. higher torque and everything. Stargate. Now, at the same time, I also have a Jenny coil that sits here and goes on here. So if you go ahead and you got to ask yourself, do you want to generate and have extra power? And then the other thing that Newman never, and the term wasn't available back then, or people never used it. They never used like the term that somehow has gotten the slang word of a feedback circuit or whatever, loop back, <laughs> that type of thing. Because back then it just wasn't. So he just had a, a generator coil that was like sort of off, and that would be like this sitting somewhere in the vicinity of it. And then he would light all the light bulbs and everything. And so when you see the patent and everything that he wrote up, not that it was ever issued, it, it explains explicitly that it's X amount of power going in to the motor. Then the generator side of it is making X amount of power that exceeds the motor power that's going in there. Then the motor is feeding back to the batteries. Then the batteries are getting recharged at the same time. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. Mm -hmm. But if you put these on the outside and everything, and then you go ahead and you put this on here, then you, you won't get the generation effect that you want. It'll be really low, it's all inducted, so go right into this and everything like that, and make it more torquey. Is, so, is that 10? Yeah, that's just 10. Yeah, you know, you could use all kinds of fancy metals and stuff, but uh, let me see. Okay. Yeah, I'll be, it'll be all done then. And this will this will be around for a while today. And so oh yeah. Everybody will get a chance to, to see it up close. Yes. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, I got. Yeah, it's gonna be right there. So I'm putting in about, I think it's forty. Forty, forty what? Forty volts. Uh, forty volts. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Turn it off. Yeah, that's why I, I wanted to show something, but I need these.
No, it's Where's the switch? Where's the switch? Oh, it's in. Oh, yeah. Oh, that plug doesn't work over there, I don't think. No, it's plugged in. No, it's plugged in. I plugged it in. Oh. Yeah, it's plugged in. Oh, yeah, it's plugged in. That Does that outlet work over there? It didn't work yesterday? No, no, no. It's, it, it, it's working. You have power. Oh, okay. You have power. <clears throat> oh, got to turn the switch on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so normally, I never put switches on things because I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Add a little light. Murphy's Law. Barking. Hold on, let me. Uh, that's okay. where I put the switch on. Oh, no, I need a um, chewing gun wrapper. Uh, Allen wrench. Where's Allen? Anywhere? Allen here. Calling Allen. Can't lose. Imitator. You got one in there? One thing you know, we all know, it does work. We all know it does work. I heard it for a second. There we go. There we go. Here's Alan. No, no Newman. Andy man coming. Anti Newman people in the room. Everybody. Thank you. 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 Take one of the um, uh, commutator uh, points, you know, up here. And oh, the other thing that's happening is this is reversing. So each time that you have the plus, yeah, let me do this. Each time you have a plus, you, you got the, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> you go like this, and it switches. Boink, 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 like that. And so you face it up. You put the magnet right about three quarters. So if you're looking at it from that point of view, from an angle right about here. So if that's the flat horizontal plane, you look at it this yeah. way. You don't put it dead center. You put it here. So then, okay, let me turn it around. Okay. And then what happens is you aim it up right here. You barely touch the commutator point right about there. And that means the back end is touching the top part. This is touching the lower part of the commutator. Then what you do is you go in with your uh, skilled uh, Allen, um, wrench. Allen wrench and hope it's the right one the first time. And it is. You're setting the timing, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's not move. Aaron, can you come on over here and actually hold? Yeah, because I usually have a long one. Hold that right there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is what happens when, you know, you, you build something really quick, but I wanted you to be able to see it instead. I mean, there's no way you're gonna be seeing this. And that's, that was flawless. So, I'll give you back. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Um, okay, now we got it, we got it on. 
And then what you do is you just start it in, in, in neutral, which is not contacting anything. Switch. Oh, switch. All right. <laughs> Yay. Oh, oh, stop. I forgot to put the rubber band. Switch. Basically, uh, that's it there. And then what happens is we go ahead and we'll put this on. This is a generator coil. And I think it was a little lighter. It's one of these goofy LEDs and you could actually see it if you, if you had it running. Pretty poor. That's uh, 2,000 feet, 1,900 turns, number 25, 68 uh, ohms. I didn't, I didn't get around to the uh, Henry's or whatever. Can you repeat that? What was that again? <laughs> what? Okay. Okay. Now that you see it, I know we're on a time crunch. We're going to bag run it with the batteries and everything. What I will do is entertain some real quick questions. So please go to the microphone. So Alan, I mean, so. Our speaker guy here. Aaron. I'm going Aaron. Bra Aaron. <laughs> My brain's going dead. So if anybody has any questions, just... Yeah, I got a question. Okay. You got to turn on first. Yeah, see? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's working. Yeah. Switch, switch. Okay. Um, you said a number 38 gauge wire. Is that what you were talking about on the 200 pound unit? Yeah, it's right there on... Um... <laughs> Why did that go off? This is... Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Get it back up on screen? It's on my screen. Oh, it's down there. Yeah, I know. But to um, get this to talk to the HDMI, to do like the dual display. Oh, that's a pain in the butt in here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd rather answer the questions. Yeah. Um, Oh, so go ahead. Okay, so the, the, the thing I, the question I had about a, num, a 38 gauge, 38 gauge, right? Yeah. Okay, now, I'd heard, and, and I need your information because you've been handling that stuff. Uh -huh. Is it thinner than a human hair? No, no, it's, it's, before, it's not that thin. Okay. You know. So you can handle it if you're really careful and it won't break on you. So oh, yes, it? it's all about tension and everything. Yeah. But the one thing I wanted to show you is this 38 gauge here is the motor that he went because he got disgusted. Uh, is, oh, oh crap! Um, I'll, I'll be able to show this to people it. out there, but the point is, is just yes, it. thirty-eight gauge. Okay. No, it's not that that hard. You just keep tension on it and everything. Okay. You got to do it correctly. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Anything? Any other questions? Yeah. So, oh, is that? <laughs> unit that you have there does that have enough wire to be over unity no not what, is, what is the minimum to be over unity um because minimum, you were saying the amount of wire the, the minimum the, right there follow his instructions with the sheet and they'll be available you know for the, the sheets will be available for twenty dollars and I, i'll be outside to give them as simple as that and you'll have that sheet or you can actually wait till a month and a half later and Aaron uh, decompresses and puts all these things up there, then you can get the sheet on the PDF file. But you can't find it online. You, you can, but you're going to have to hunt. You will have to hunt, 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 hunt. Forever. So. I can hardly wait to buy it right here. Yeah. So, anything else? Yeah. Um, Me too. Now, what were you saying? Uh, the, the windings on that were? I didn't catch that. You said it so fast. Oh, the windings is 2,000 turns. 
1900 uh no 1900 turns 2000 feet number 25 and 68 ohms now remember just remember it's not the the other thing that i saved to the very end doesn't really matter about the wire except for poundage mm -hmm. okay look at this thing as poundage <laughs> when you have a lot of poundage of the wire it will work <laughs> and so once you have a lot of poundages up to a certain point you'll you will have it working so you're saying that size isn't as important as the weight of the wire size matters <laughs> sure does <laughs> so you're saying all, quarter, all you have to do is ask women <laughs> big Mac stole this from Newman huh the quarter uh, pounder what I said uh, big uh, McDonald stole it from Newman yes. the quarter pounder <laughs> any no. Oh, when, when, when you're going with this length of wire, which would be a huge length of wire when you're saying 200 pounds of wire, um, are you the insulation quality has to be real high, doesn't it? Because when you when you disconnect, you're going to have these voltage spikes that are going up into the thousands of volts. Yeah, all you need is just regular magnet wire. Just regular it doesn't have to be quantum or no, 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 that stuff. You can improve all that. That's the oh. point. But you just wrap it, wrap it, wrap it, wrap it, just like the ham and cheese sandwich. Wow. Do it identically as that piece of paper tells you to do. Okay. All right. Yeah. Two hundred pounds. Yep. Yeah. By the way, you make a good comedian. Oh, thank you. No, I'm not here. I'm just here to give the knowledge so people. Your personality is great. Thank you. Uh, That's why they call me like the little retard. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, there's one thing, the sad thing of him dying. And the one thing that's bugging me about this entire presentation, not mechanics of it, not mechanics, it works. But what stopped you? Was it the oil companies? Stopped me or Newman? Newman. Oh, Newman, oh, it was the oil companies, and the patent house. He got threatened and he would tell them basically to go to hell. Simple as that. <laughs> and they knew that they couldn't deal with him. And the person, he received a phone call and everything like that. And that video actually is available where Joe is talking about it. it's on the internet and everything. And he's sitting there and the lady says, I know we can't buy you off and everything like that. But, and so he told the message, well, you send them right to hell and everything. And so the guy goes, well, the girl goes, well, I will deliver that message. They probably won't <laughs> like it. And he says, I don't give <laughs> so, for Okay, for alternative en energy, no matter what it is, no matter what type of energy, how do we get past the oil companies or the Rothschilds or whatever? Oh, you just go, the one thing you got to realize is, as Seth build. says and everything, you make your own reality. Just build the just stuff build. and get it out there. It's like yeah. the QEG. The one platform that the uh, Hope Girls laid out is that there's a whole bunch of them. And then all of a sudden when they put the last little nut in it and it, they pop it on and it works, then you have a unit there and then you have a whole bunch of people that has it. You got to realize that the whole world is being run by a bunch of little bullies. Simple as that. So just ignore them. So all you get to do is ignore them. Me and you ignore bullies, that's it. You know? Well, I can, I can put, do it. It'll just make it, it just goes around and around. Oh, no, no, no. This is a bridge, Aaron. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and the only thing with with that is that you can just put a whole bunch of more and more and then what happens is when you add up the batteries like this and I have a whole bunch of them in there what happens is you, you're doing volts so it's like 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 right so you just do 100 200 but then you get the spark and the spark is like a flame and Newman used to sit there and say like controlling the lightning and so then that lightning has to be put into the capacitor you know and then when you do that then i'll do it right and then you can connect up the batteries and everything like that the one thing i do suggest in in your training so you say you don't burn out a bunch of batteries real quick and everything if you don't get it properly done is put one or two gel cells in there then what happens with that is that the back spike will go into the gel cells mm. first mm. before uh heating up these guys you know and so that's it oh my question was uh does that coil system take into account harmonics and all the stuff we've learned here that 
and help enhance it, or, or does that just ignore it and it works anyway? Okay, we well, can yeah. improve it. You, you can ignore it, but one of the big things that we're doing right now, and this is why degree. finally I have the right engineer. One, I was uh, blessed again to get an engineer that uh, has uh, worked in this field for a long time. What I mean by working in this field is the fact that he's got one foot grounded in regular engineering, but he spent his sort of hobby stuff looking into the free energy thing. And that's a very rare find. Most engineers, just, they're engineers, simple as that. Okay, so I think that'll have to be the last question, uh, but that's gonna be around. If you're here, if you wanna come up to the motor, not right now, but at a break or whatever, it's gonna be around, um, you know, all afternoon yeah. and stuff. So you can't leave here um, and think, well, I didn't know what it was to see how the commutator is properly set up. So you gotta make sure you come up and take pictures and video clips and whatever, go around the motor. So if you leave here and you have a question about how that thing was put together, that's your responsibility. Yeah, I'll be out there. And it is there whether you have the sheet or not. You come up and you look at it. Yeah. So, so the sheet, the sheet money is going to gas, I guess how simple is that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what, one more question, then we're going to Go take ahead. a quick break and uh, get on to the next presentation. Yeah, have you thought about using supercapacitors instead of batteries? Uh, oh, oh yeah, they're, 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 see now you're starting to get into the realm of what we're doing back at Energy Bat Labs is that we're going to test this. One of the things about it is that the testing was all done in 84, but mm -hmm. we don't have it. So what I'm going to do is test it and have all the data available and upload it and everything like that. So all that stuff will be available in data sheets. I want, my whole life about data sheets is you have it no more than two, you know. One is for reading and one is for the other reason. While you're in the toilet. So. <laughs> Thank you, Jeffrey Miller. Okay. Thanks for right. your time. That's good, thank you. Can you. One more rotation, please. That was a brilliant thing. 
just to video it. Turn it. Okay, if we were up front on the stage, if we can, uh, where's Jeffrey going? I gotta get off on it. Um, it has, it has to be on, it has to be on the commutator here that he was adjusting the timing. I don't see where the Allen screw is or was. It must be right in here somewhere. Right there. That has to be where the Allen screw was or he was adjusting the time. Well, because he was setting it down on, on his shaft. So yeah. you tight lock it down there. Yeah. They, that's the Allen screw. Yeah. You might somebody put with your finger or show that's the Allen screw, it's turning right past right now. There's the Allen screw right there. Okay. Thank you.